Now that we've reviewed the different buses, I want to spend some time discussing a few of the UNIO bus requirements. As you already learned, the UNIO bus uses a single I.O. port, but let's discuss what that means. First, only three pins are used, power, ground, and a single serial data I.O. port. For communications to be supported using a single line, a Manchester encoder communications protocol is used. In a UNIO bus interface, the master will establish the data rate by sending an 8-bit start header at the beginning of all communications, and it is a job of the UNIO slave device to sync up to this data rate. An example of an 8-bit start header is shown below. The slave will begin the synchronization step after it sees a low start header pulse, but will synchronize only after eight consecutive pulses of alternating zeros and ones have been recognized. We've been talking about Manchester Communications, so now I would like to provide an overview of this protocol. The main reason for selecting the Manchester Communication Protocol was to enable the use of a single signal line for both the clock and data. Since data transitions occur on every bit, the clock can easily be extracted from the data and the UNIO device can sync to the data rate established by the MCU. As an example, take a look at the diagram below where we are showing the bit period TE. This period will support the UNIO frequency range and is controlled by the master and the transitions are only valid at the middle of the bit period. A logic high is generated by sending a rising edge in the middle of a bit period, and a logic low is generated by sending a falling edge. Any adjustments to the signal can be made at the edge of the bit period since the middle of the period is reserved for the actual Manchester data. We've been discussing the UNIO bus. Now let's talk about the UNIO EEPROM features. First, the connection to a UNIO device will only need a single I.O. port for communication. Since there is not a limitation on the densities, we are first releasing the lower density 1K, 2K, 4K, 8K, and 16K bit devices. A wide voltage range from 1.8 volts to 5.5 volts over a frequency range from 10 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz will be supported. This includes the resynchronization circuitry that allows the UNIO slave device to sync up in frequency and phase to any MCU master. We are now able to support a 3-lead SOT23 package, but the standard 8-lead SOIC, MSOP, 2x3 TDFN, and PDIP packages are also supported. With only a single connection available, the UNIO protocol is designed to be software addressable, like the I2C bus, and it has software write protect that operates like the SPI bus block protect. In order to support any type of application, both industrial and extended temperatures are supported. And to help you get started with development, we have the MP Lab starter kit for serial memory product. Even though the UNIO family is new, we have identified a few applications where this type of memory can be used. Of course, there will be many more applications in the future, but that's up to you. For applications where authentication is required, we know that the UNIO devices can be used in printer cartridges or batteries. In applications where calibration parameters need to be stored, the limited I.O. is very useful in medical applications like glucose strips or insulin pumps. If identification is a requirement, PC cards can also use the UNIO device for the enumeration memory. When cabling is an issue and you have data logging requirement, the single signal line is definitely an advantage. If you're as excited about the UNIO product line as we are, but don't have a platform to evaluate an entirely new bus protocol, we may have an answer for you. First, let's take a look at the pinouts of a UNIO EEPROM in an 8-lead package. In either the SOIC, MSOP, TDFN, or PDIP packages, only three pins, VCC, VSS, and SCIO are used, and five no-connect pins are also used. 
Let's take a look at the pinout for an I2C EE prom in the same package. As you can see, the VCC, VSS, and data lines use the same pins as the Unio EE prom. The pinout for an SPI EE prom also uses the same pins, VCC, VSS, and the data input signal. What this means is that you can unsolder your existing I2C or SPI EE prom devices and replace it with the Unio, the Unio device for a very easy evaluation. Microchip even includes the software drivers for popular microcontrollers that are in use today. Please check our webpage for available drivers or drivers currently in process. For more information about Unio EE proms, check out our website. Our data sheets are an excellent source of information. They not only provide information on our new Unio EE prom family, but they describe in great detail how the Unio bus operates. We also have several educational app notes that should provide more information. Between the application notes and the product data sheets, you should have enough information to help you understand this new bus standard and how the Unio devices will operate in your system. This includes our recommended design practices for this new family. Finally, we have a list of the current software drivers available on our website and those that are in process. You can also check out the Unio web forum page for additional information from other designers.